In this example, we're asked to find the Fourier series of a square wave. The square wave is defined in the question at this point here. And the first thing we have to do is sketch the function between minus 3 pi and plus 3 pi. The function is defined in the question between pi and minus pi, but then we're told that the periodicity is 2 pi. So if we start with the definition of the function, we can see that it's got a value of minus a between minus pi and 0. So we can draw a line there. And then between 0 and pi, it has a value equal to plus a, like that. So we can join those two points there. Now to extend the function, all we need to note is if we're, if we're sketching it in a given region, it has exactly the same value as the same region but displaced by 2 pi or any integer multiple of 2 pi. So between pi and 2 pi, the function has the same value as between minus pi and 0. So the function looks like that. And then between 2 pi and 3 pi, it has the same value as between 0 and pi. So we get the function looking like that. And we can use the same arguments to draw the function in the region between minus pi and minus 3 pi. So the function looks as shown in the sketch there. So that's the first part of the question. The second part of the question requires us to calculate the Fourier series for this function. So we have to calculate the values of a0, an and also bn. So here I've taken the definition of the Fourier series from the lecture notes. We're dealing with a function that has a period 2 pi, so we need to use the appropriate formula. The only difference is the question we're dealing with, the function is a function of x, whereas in the lecture notes we define it in terms of t. So we just need to swap wherever we have a t now, we need to swap for an x. So we'll see later on in the course that just by looking at the form of the function, we could immediately say that a0 is equal to 0, and also a n for all values of n is also equal to 0. But in this question, we'll do the formal calculations to show that that's the case. So we'll start off by calculating a0. a0 is given by 1 divided by pi. And now it's the integral over a full period of the function. Now we have to be a little bit careful here because the function has a value of, for example, a between 0 and pi and minus a between pi and 2 pi. But we can deal with that by splitting up the integral into two steps. We can have a first integral that takes us between 0 and pi. Over that range, the function has a value a. So we have a dx. And then we have a second integral which takes us between pi and 2 pi. And over that range, the function has a value minus a. So we have this result here. We can now perform the integral. We can bring the a outside the integral. That's just a constant. And then we get for the first integral, the essentially got the integral of 1 dx. So that integrates up to x, limits of 0 and pi. And then the second integral, there's a minus sign there because of the original minus a. That also integrates up to x. And the limits are pi and 2 pi, like that. We now have to put in the limits. So we get a divided by pi brackets. The first integral, the upper limit is pi, the lower limit is 0. For the second integral, the upper limit is 2 pi, but because of the minus sign, that gives us a minus 2 pi there. And then the lower limit would be minus pi, but again, the negative sign gives me a plus pi there. And we can see that inside the brackets now we have pi plus pi is 2 pi minus 2 pi is equal to 0. So we've shown that for the function we're dealing with, a0 has a value equal to 0. And again, we expected that because a0 is related to the average of the function. And if we look at the function, we can see it's symmetrical about the x-axis. So it has a value, an average value equal to 0. The next task is to find the value of a n for an arbitrary value of n. So again, we can write down the definition using the above equation. It's 1 over pi. Now we'll write this down. It's the integral between 0 and 2 pi. It's the function itself. And then we have 
cos nx dx, like that. Again, we have to be careful when we deal with the function because of the way it's defined. So again, we can calculate the integral by breaking it up into two steps. We can have an integral between naught and pi. There the function has a value a, so we have a cos nx dx, and then we have the integral between pi and 2 pi. There the function has a value minus a, and then we have cos nx dx, like that. So again, we can evaluate this integral. It's only slightly more complex than the result that we had to calculate for a0. Again, we can bring out a factor of a. So we have a over pi. And then the first integral, it's a cos integral. So it integrates up to sine nx. And there's a factor of n comes out. And the limits are naught and pi. The second integral, we've got the minus still. The integral is still the same. It's sine nx over n. And the limits are pi and 2 pi, like that. If we now think about the limits, however, all the limits are either sine of 0 or sine of n pi or sine of 2n pi. And we know that the sine function always has a value equal to 0 at 0 or any integer, integer multiple of n pi. So we can now write that the above result is equal to 0. So what we've shown now is n, a n is equal to 0 for all values of n. So there are no cosine terms in the Fourier series. The final result we have to Calculate is the value of bn, and we hope that this is not going to be equal to zero. We'll see that that's the case. So bn is equal to 1 over pi, and then it's the integral between naught and 2 pi, and then it's the function f of x, and then sine nx dx. Again, we can deal with this integral by splitting it into two integrals. So we have 1 over pi brackets, first integral takes us from 0 to pi. In that range, f of x has a value equal to a, so it's a sine nx dx. And then the second integral is a minus, because the function has a value equal to minus a there, and then that's between pi and 2 pi a sine nx dx, like that. We can now work out the integrals again we can bring out a factor of a there we're now integrating a sine function that takes us to a minus cosine function again there's a factor of n comes out and we have naught and pi and then minus and then the second integral gives me minus cos nx over n between pi and 2 pi like that. Now we're going to find that calculating bn is a little bit more tricky than an because as we'll see bn is not equal to zero. Let's be, have to be particularly careful here. Let's take the minuses out of the integral. So what we get for the first term is we get to 1 over n and then we get cos n pi minus 1 and then the second integral is again 1 over n and we get cos 2 n pi minus cos n pi like that. And we can do a bit of simplification now. This gives me minus a over n pi because it's a common factor of 1 over n. If you look inside here, we get there are two factors of cos n pi. We've got a cos n pi just here, and we've got another minus, but then a minus, so another plus cos n pi there. So we get 2 cos n pi, and then there's also a factor of minus 1 there, but if we look over here, we have a cos 2 n pi. Now, cos 2 n pi, as long as n is an integer, 
this always has a value equal to 1. So cos of pi, 2 pi cos of 4 pi. And so this also, the underlined part here, also gives me a value of equal to 1. There's a minus 1 in front of that bracket. So we get that there's a factor of minus 2 there. So we can simplify things a little bit. We can bring a factor of 2 outside the bracket. We can get rid of the minus just here by reversing the order of the terms inside the bracket. So we get 2a over n pi, 1 minus cos n pi, like that. And this is our value for bn here. Now at this point, we need to think what values bn. Will bn be non-zero for all values of n? So what we can do here is we can make a little table and if we want we can put in our table cos n pi and then here cos 1 minus cos n pi as shown there. So let's put in some typical values. Remember that n has to be positive and non-zero. So let's try 1, 2, 3. So if we think about cos n pi when n is 1, that's cos of pi, that's minus 1. When n is 2, we get plus 1. When n equals 3, cos of 3 pi again is minus 1. And so if we now calculate 1 minus cos n pi, we can see that for when n equals 1, we get a value equal to 2. When n is equal to 2, we get 1 minus 1, that gets a 0. And when n equals 3, we also get 2. So what we can see is that bn is equal to 0 for even n and bn is equal to, if you think about the result up here, bn is equal to, there's now going to be a factor of, in fact we should probably, it's easy to use this result here, we can see that bn is going to be equal to 4a over n pi for odd n. Okay. So finally, we can write our Fourier series. We can say that f of x is equal to 4a divided by pi, and then it's the sum n equals 1 to infinity, but we only have odd n. Even n's give us a value equal to 0. And then there's a factor of 1 over n. That's coming from this term here. And then we get sine nx like that. Or well, if you want to write the first few terms, we can write this as 4a divided by pi. And then the first term will be when n is equal to 1, so we'll have sine nx. The second term will be when n is equal to 3, so we get a factor of 1 over 3, sine 3x. And then the third term will be 1 over 5, sine 5x, and so on like that. There'll be an infinite number of terms. Now just one point to be careful of here, we can see that in the final result here, that we just have the odd terms. It's important not to get these confused with the symmetry of the original function, which is an odd function. We'll talk about this later in the course, but if we look at this function here, you should remember from last year that this is an odd function. It's an odd function, but that has no general relationship to which terms are in, for example, in this case, the sine series. We have seen in this case that only the odd sine terms are present, but we could equally well have an odd function which had even sine terms present. And again, we'll discuss that later on in the course.